Good morning and welcome to Food for Thought. My name is Pastor Clint Lang. It is December the 12th, 2020, Saturday. Hard to believe this time is going so fast. We're already at the end of the second week of Advent before Christmas. Well, this week we've been focusing in on peace, on the subject of peace. Peace. Um, the Bible has lots to say about it and the world is seeking peace. Security seems to be the great preoccupation of our society these days. Airports have heightened security over the last number of years. We, we've seen them beef up the security since 9-11. The United States government is trying to lock down its borders to provide additional security to its citizens. We're encouraged to purchase security systems for our homes, for our cars, for our computers, for our bank information. Um, it just seems to be a preoccupation. And despite all of this, there is the threat to security in ever-increasing measure out there in the world today. It's more dangerous than ever, it seems. There's a great de demand today for peace and for soundness of mind. And people are trying to look for it in many different things. They're trying to find it in the homes that they purchase out of the way, you know, in the back country. You see people with elaborate estates trying to escape the rat race and find some security out in the serenity of nature. As a matter of fact, our area around here in 100 Mile House seems to be a place where people try to escape to find a better, more peaceful life. Peace cannot be kept by force, it was once said. It can only be achieved by understanding. But what does the Word of God have to say about peace? Well, the prophet Micah foretold the coming of the one who would provide people with true peace and security. See, the world has a system and it encourages people to seek after different things to find their peace, but I think there is security in God that the world has no idea how to replicate because it can't. The book of Revelation describes the ultimate destiny of the church after Jesus Christ deals with the evil of this world. In Revelation 21-25, we're given a picturistic description of God's people residing in the safety and security of a city where the gates are never closed. Security measures are entirely unnecessary in this future city because all things have been made new. The old order of things has been laid aside and the citizens of the New Jerusalem will enjoy abiding peace under the lordship and kingship of Jesus Christ. In John 14.3, Jesus promises his followers, And if I go to prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to be with me, that you may also be where I am. Just before the Lord ascended into heaven to sit at the right hand of the Father, Jesus informed his disciples that he was about to go and prepare such a place for us in heaven. So, even after this world is done, and the universe and everything in it is destroyed by fire, God will create a new heavens and a new earth that will be filled with peace. And we, as the followers of Jesus Christ, are promised to have an inheritance in that place for all of eternity. That's a wonderful thing. What a wonderful promise from God. In John 16:33, Jesus reassures us with promises when he says this. He says, I have told you these things so that in me you may have peace. In this world you will have trouble. But take heart, I have overcome the world. The security that comes from the peace offered by Jesus is not the fleeting kind of security that the world struggles to achieve. It's one rooted deeply within us through Christ's Holy Spirit that one day we will be with him forever and it will not be disrupted by any worldly threat. You can take away a Christian's life but you can't take away his peace and his security. As we await the second coming of our Lord and the city that is to come and heaven that is to come after that. In Hebrews chapter 13, 14, it is written, 
Now may the God of peace, who through the blood of the eternal covenant brought back from the dead our Lord Jesus Christ, that great shepherd of the sheep, equip you with everything good for doing his will, and may he work in us what is pleasing to him through Jesus Christ, to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. Brothers and sisters, may we continue to live securely in Jesus Christ in an insecure world, deriving our security from the Prince of Peace. During this season of trouble and trials that are upon the world, let us invite the Holy Spirit to live in our lives in fullness, to give us peace that surpasses understanding, that guards our hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. I pray that as we approach the Christmas season, that our hearts would be open to everything that God desires us to see. May you understand the width, the depth, the height of the love of God for you this Christmas season. And may that fill your heart with an inexpressible sense of his peace. And may it rest on you and your whole family. God bless you today. This is Food for Thought.